Aura recently launched their new beta sleep stage algorithm and I'm gonna put it to the test. Over the course of 83 nights, I've been wearing my Aura ring and also measuring my sleep using an EEG device that can actually measure my brain waves. We're gonna take a scientific and systematic approach to evaluating the sleep stage tracking data of the Aura ring and we'll see how well it performs compared to this EEG device. The aim is to see how accurate and reliable the Aura Ring truly is when it comes to tracking our sleep patterns. So buckle up and get ready to learn about the new beta sleep stage algorithm of the Aura Ring. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now in this video, I wanna analyze the performance of the new beta sleep stage algorithm of the Aura Ring in two ways. Now, I already mentioned using an EEG reference device, but in addition to make the evaluation even more robust, I wore two Aura rings at the same time on the same hand. This will allow us to check if the new beta sleep stage algorithm is consistent across two devices and if both rings detect the same sleep stages. And this is actually the analysis I want to start with. So let's get going and see how the Aura rings new beta sleep stage algorithm stacks up. But let's first take a small step back and let me try to explain why it makes sense to compare the data generated by two Aura rings I wore at the same time. Let's assume two scenarios for a second. The first is that the Aura ring takes perfect measurements and that the sleep stage algorithm is also perfect. In that case, both of my rings would be able to perfectly estimate my sleep stages, which means to provide the exact same output in the app and they 100% agree. In this second scenario, either the measurements of the Aura Ring are random or the sleep stage algorithm is so bad that it basically generates random data. In that case, the two rings will give very different results and the sleep stages they show me in the morning will be very different. This means that if we're closer to scenario one than to scenario two, meaning that the Aura Ring is a pretty accurate sleep stage tracker, that both Aura Rings should give roughly the same results when it comes to their sleep stages. So by comparing the sleep stages measured by two Aura Rings worn on the same hand, it will give us some indication of the robustness of the algorithm without actually having to use a reference device. So let's take a look at those results. Now on top here are the sleep stages as recorded by the Aura Ring I wore on my ring finger, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Aura Ring I wore on my index finger. Now I wore both these rings to bed at the same time for 35 nights, and we want to see how close the predictions of the two rings are to each other. Now here I randomly selected the Aura Ring on my ring finger as the reference, but the results are more or less the same if I flipped them. And each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Aura Ring on my ring finger was predicted as each sleep stage by the Aura Ring on my index finger. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now, first of all, we see that about 82% of what the ring on my ring finger predicted as deep sleep was also predicted as deep sleep by the other ring. And that's actually pretty decent. And if they did disagree, this is almost exclusively as light sleep, where about 17% of what one aura ring predicted as deep sleep was predicted as light sleep by the other ring. And we can see that in more detail based on the individual nights. Now on top here we have the sleep stages according to the aura ring on my ring finger with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stage along the vertical axis. And on the bottom we have a similar plot so for the same night but now for the other aura ring. And I've highlighted all the deep sleep recorded by the aura ring on my ring finger so the one on top in purple right here. And as you can see there's a pretty good agreement between both devices. Especially in the beginning of the night they detect more or less the same deep sleep. Later in the night we do see some minor differences, but these are pretty small. And we see more or less the same thing for the second example night, though there is some more disagreement here. We see that the large deep sleep segment here in the beginning agrees very well between both of the devices, but later on we do see some disagreements for some of the shorter segments. And there are also nights where the agreement is almost perfect, I would say, like for this night right here. Both rings detected almost the same deep sleep for this particular night. And we see the same thing for this night right here where the agreement is really good with just some minor differences. Looking at light sleep the agreement is even better at close to 89% and this makes some sense as light sleep makes up the bulk of your night. And most disagreement between the two rings when it comes to light sleep was with REM sleep at about 5% but also sometimes with deep sleep and awake time though all these percentages are pretty small. REM sleep agreement is actually the worst between both of these rings, with about 74% of what one ring predicted as being REM sleep also being predicted as REM sleep by the other ring. And disagreement between the two rings in terms of REM sleep was almost exclusively with light sleep, with about 23% of what one ring detected as being REM sleep being detected as light sleep by the other ring instead. 
Now, this actually makes a lot of sense if we look at the individual knights. Now, this is a similar plot to before, but now with the REM sleep as marked by the aura ring on my ring finger in red. And as you can see, both aura rings compared to the other sleep stages tend to detect quite fragmented REM sleep segments. Now, with that, I mean that they detect these shorter segments interrupted by other sleep stages. And this might actually be one of the reasons why there's a larger REM sleep disagreement between the two rings compared to the other sleep stages. And we also see many more of these short awakenings in between my REM sleep segments compared to the other sleep stages. For this second example night, we still see an okay agreement between both rings. However, both of them actually detected very little REM sleep, and I'm not sure if that's true. And the O-ring on the bottom did detect some extra REM sleep here in the beginning of the night that the other one didn't detect. However, this was also a night where I had quite poor sleep quality, so that might be part of the explanation. Which is also true for this night, again a night with poor sleep quality, but still the agreement between both rings looks quite good honestly. They tend to detect roughly the same REM sleep segments, though some of the details might differ. And also for this night, for instance, we see quite a good match between both of the rings. Detecting your awake moments was actually quite consistent between the two rings, showing about an 84% agreement. And as expected, any disagreement was with light sleep, since this is the closest sleep stage to being awake. Now, as I mentioned before, the aura ring tends to detect a lot of short moments of awakening, especially in and around REM sleep segments, which other devices might not classify significant enough to report. Now, many of these do tend to match between the two rings, but also many don't. In green here, I mark the awake moments as detected by the aura ring on the top of this plot. And if you compare the two, you indeed see that some agree and some don't, but overall it looks quite good though. And especially the longer awake moments tend to match well, as you can also see for this night right here, which looks pretty consistent between both the rings for the longer awake moments. So overall, this looks quite good, at least good enough in my opinion. I'm unsure what to think of these really short awakenings if they're really that informative, but the agreement is good enough. What about detecting the moment I fell asleep and detecting the moment I woke up? Was this very different between the aura rings? Well, that is displayed right here for all 35 nights. The blue dots indicate the time differences between the two aura rings for me falling asleep. And as you can see, they generally agreed very well. Only once did one of the rings detect me as falling asleep 42 minutes earlier than the other ring. And the yellow dots also indicate time differences, but now the time differences for me waking up. And again, they generally matched quite well, though now there were a few more nights with somewhat larger disagreements between 22 and 31 minutes. But still, overall, this doesn't look too bad. However, comparing two aura rings to one another doesn't give us the full story. In explaining why I wanted to do this comparison, I gave you two scenarios. In the first one, the aura ring is perfect, so the two rings give the exact same result. And in the second one, they were random, so there was very little overlap. However, there's a third scenario, that the algorithm of the aura ring might be very bad, but it might still be consistent between the two rings. Take an extreme scenario, for instance, where both rings always predict that you're awake all the time, and in that case, they're 100% consistent between each other, but unless you're a bullfrog, which can actually stay awake for months at a time, both rings are probably doing a pretty poor job at tracking your actual sleep patterns. So the next step is to compare the aura ring against a reference device. Now in this video, I'll compare my aura rings to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. Now for getting an overall impression of how well the aura ring performs, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I can actually try on the aura ring in a few weeks. And here I show an overview of the sleep test results. On top we have the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device and on the left the sleep stages as recorded by the aura ring on my ring finger. I wore both the aura ring and the EEG device to bed for 53 nights and we will see how close the predictions of the aura ring are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as a sleep stage by the aura ring. Again, if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that about 85% of what the EEG device detected as being deep sleep was also detected as deep sleep by the aura ring, and this is actually quite good. If it was predicted differently, it was exclusively predicted as being light sleep at about 15%. And we can clearly see this agreement based on the individual nights as well. On top here are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device, and on the bottom are the sleep stages as recorded by the aura ring. I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple here, and as you can see there's actually a pretty good match between both devices, with most of the EEG detected deep sleep also detected by the aura ring, it just tends to detect a little bit extra. And we see more or less the same thing for this second example night. 
Almost all of the deep sleep detected by the EEG device is also detected by the Aura Ring. It just detects a bit extra right here. And this is more or less what we see for most nights. Almost all of the EEG detected deep sleep is also detected by the Aura Ring, but it just detects a little bit extra. So I would say that deep sleep detection by the Aura Ring is quite good overall. Light sleep agreement is also pretty good, with about 79% of what the EEG device detected as light sleep also being detected as light sleep by the Aura Ring. And most disagreement came in the form of deep sleep and awake time, both at around 9%. Now REM sleep agreement is actually the worst, at about 52%. And this is in line with what we saw for the consistency between the two Aura Rings before, which is also the worst for REM sleep. And most disagreement in this case was with light sleep, with about 41% of what the EEG device detected as being REM sleep being classified as light sleep by the Ring. However, the results might actually be a lot better than those percentages make it seem. Take this example night for instance, where the EEG recorded RAM sleep is marked in red, and as you can see there's a pretty good match between both devices, and they detected more or less the same RAM sleep segments. The main difference appears to be that the Aura Ring detects shorter and more fragmented REM sleep segments, but the location of those segments is roughly the same as for the EEG device. Only for this night right here did it miss the first short REM sleep segment, but otherwise the agreement is pretty good. And that's actually the general pattern that we see. The Aura Ring is able to detect most of the REM sleep segments that the EEG device also detected. They just tend to be shorter and more fragmented, and sometimes it also misses the shorter REM sleep segments in the beginning, as you can also see at the beginning of this night right here. But overall, I would say that the agreement is quite good. And this does also mean that the Aura Ring can detect most of my sleep cycles as well. Now you go through roughly 4 to 6 sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep marked in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep marked in red. And as you can see, I likely had 1, 2, 3, 4 complete sleep cycles this night. And we can see many of them based on just the data from the Aura Ring. As we can also see for this night for instance, we generally see a good match between the Aura Ring and the EEG device when it comes to REM sleep segments and also the sleep cycles. Awake moment detection also agrees very well at about 86%, with most of the awake moments that are differentially detected by the Aura Ring being classified as light sleep, which makes some sense as light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. Now what I generally see is that most of the awake moments detected by the EEG device, which are marked here in green in this example, are also detected by the Aura Ring. The Aura Ring just tends to detect many more of those short awakenings as well. And these shorter awake moments is actually something that the EEG headband tends to ignore, so that makes it a bit difficult to evaluate. And that's basically what we see for most of the nights. The Aura Ring agrees with the EEG headband on the longer awake moments, it just detects many more of these short awakenings throughout the night as well. And this night is a really good example of that, where you see that the EEG headband detects two awake moments, both of which are also detected by the Aura Ring, but the Aura Ring just has a bunch more of these short awake moments. This is honestly looking quite good for the Aura Ring and the new beta sleep stage algorithm. Most sleep stages agree very well with an EEG headband, and even though REM sleep disagrees a bit more, it still shows the patterns that it should, meaning we can still interpret our nights the way we should. Next, let's also quickly see if my second Aura Ring gave the same results. And those results are displayed right here. On the left are the results that we just saw, but now on the right is the agreement of the Aura Ring I wore on my index finger with the EG headband. And as you can see, the results are basically the same, with the percentage of agreement being very similar for both. So we see very similar agreement for deep sleep, for light sleep, REM sleep, and awake time. The biggest difference we see for awake time, and this is less than 3% off. So overall, this looks very good to me, and it gives me a bit of extra confidence in the analysis. However, to put these results into context, we can compare the performance of the Aura Ring to that of 43 other watches I've tested previously. Now this graph actually shows you an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis here we have the agreement over the four individual sleep stages, and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see, the devices with the best agreement so far were different Apple Watches. In this case the Apple Watch Series 7, Series 8, but also the Apple Watch SE and Apple Watch Ultra. Now out of all the Apple Watches, I have most data for the Apple Watch Ultra, seven and eight, and all of these have about the same overall agreement. So I would say that all Apple Watches perform about the same. And just below that, devices with also pretty good agreement are different Fitbits, Whoop straps, the Withing Sleep Analyzer, but also the Google Pixel Watch and Google Nest Hub. All of these perform roughly the same and are pretty good as well. 
And if we now plot my two aura rings in the same plot, which are marked here in red, we actually see that they both do quite well. Both of them have an overall average agreement of just over 75%, which is really good. That percentage of overall agreement is really close to the Apple Watches and even a bit better than the Fitbit devices and the Whoop strap. So this is looking quite good. Just on the vertical axis here, they're slightly worse than some of those, so the worst sleep stage, which is REM sleep in the case of the Aura Ring. Now, it's just because of this lower REM sleep that they're a bit lower on this axis, but as I mentioned before, the patterns still agree very well, and also the reference device tends to smooth out the sleep stages a little bit, so it might actually be that the reference device is also not perfect for this. So overall, I would say that the Aura Ring is doing quite well, and I'm pretty impressed with the new algorithm. And if we compare that to the old algorithm, which was also used by the Aura Ring, two which is all the way down here we see quite a significant improvement so the aura ring is now really amongst the best devices out there together with apple watches fitbits the whoop straps and the google pixel watch so i'm pretty impressed with how it's performing now given the limitations of my testing i have to admit it's difficult to say which device is the actual best out there i still think that the apple watches are some of the best ones out there and probably the best one out there but the aura ring is super close now and also fitbit devices are not that far away so if you talk about limitations i just tested it on me and i have an imperfect reference device but i will be able to test these devices with a polysonography device soon so let's wait for those results and see how all of them stack up Overall, this actually means I'm quite happy with this improved performance of the new sleep stage algorithm of the Aura Ring. It's up there now with the better performing watches like Fitbit and Whoop, and it's very close even to Apple. And given that it's still in beta, it might actually still improve a bit. But before getting to my conclusions, I do have to mention some of the limitations in my testing. First of all, the Dream 2 EEG headband is not a perfect reference. I believe it's good enough for my purposes, but it has its flaws. The reason I use the Dream 2 as a reference is that it's easy to use, relatively reliable, and I can use it to collect many nights of data. The main downside is that it tends to smooth out the sleep stages a bit, so it doesn't capture all the small details all the time. Now another major limitation is that I only tested the Aura Rings on me and it might perform differently on different skin tones for instance or maybe differently on women or maybe if you have some problems with your circulation. Oh and you might have noticed that your own Aura Ring sleep data looks a bit less detailed than what I showed you in my plots. And this is because I received the data from Aura directly in the highest resolution possible whereas what is displayed in your app in the morning has a slightly lower resolution. But this last part, so the lower data resolution in app versus the data that I showed you is not a limitation just a choice of data visualization. But okay, what are my conclusions? Well, I was already a fan of the health insights and the advice that the Aura Ring provides, and now with the improved sleep stage tracking, I can recommend the Aura Ring to even more people. The Aura Ring is one of the main tools I personally use to keep track of my health and my sleep, and I'm happy to see it's improved even further. The only thing the ring is honestly still quite bad at is tracking your workout heart rate. And if this is important to you, I wouldn't recommend getting an Aura Ring. If you want an overall good performing device that also tracks your health really well, in addition to being a decent heart rate tracker, I would recommend getting a Whoop Strap. Now, if you want to buy an Aura Ring, a Whoop Strap, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and you also want to support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now, if you want to know more about the Whoop Strap as an alternative to the Aura Ring, check out this video right here. Or if you actually find heart rate tracking very important, check out these videos on the Apple Watch Ultra and the Apple Watch SE. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.